So, uh, you must believe in spring. This is from one of the new real books, and I made an arrangement here of uh, this fantastic jazz composition uh, by Michel Legrand, who uh, passed away a few weeks ago, I think. Uh, and uh, this tune is also very fitting these days because the weather is pretty bad. It's here in Sweden. Uh, yeah, so. I haven't talked about chord melody before much, and um, what I'm trying to do here is not a super sophisticated, fancy chord melody ar arrangement in the style of, I don't know, Howard Roberts or something like that. You can do that, but I'm looking for something pretty simple, something easy, uh, something that you can use. Let's say you are on a gig and somebody calls the tune and uh, they go well why don't you the guitar player start it off with the chorus you know you can't just have an intricate perfect chord melody arrangement of every standard uh, under your fingers at all times it's but you can have the ability to kind of make a quasi chord melody arrangement uh, and I'll show you what I mean so it a mistake that many people make in the beginning, they think that they need to put a chord under every note, but uh, that's not necessary. Uh, it's better to have a good understanding of how harmony works, so why certain notes are chord tones and why some notes are passing notes and where the notes, how the notes are relating to the chord that will help you. That's more uh, important than to have a great sense of super fancy voicings. So, uh, the melody starts with uh, this, right? Uh, well, what are the, I just want to look at the lyrics here, because I like the lyrics. Uh, when, lonely with, uh, when lonely feeling chill the meadows of your mind. So I changed the melody a little bit, sorry Michel Levant, but I like this better. So, so I'm playing. First chord is a C sharp minus 7 flat 5. And then we have an F sharp, uh, some kind of F sharp dominant. And then B minor. But something interesting is happening here. It is that the B minor is a little bit, the resolution is delayed. I'm not sure the exact correct technical terms, but. The resolution is later than you expect, which makes it sound kind of classical. Also, they put in the real book, it says B in the root so F sharp flat 9 over B to B minor so it gives you that kind of classical sound so it's not some kind of B chord it's an F sharp dominant with the B in the bass When you're soloing, by the way, if you're soloing, you usually don't play that. You just play a B minor. So anyway, um, as I said before, you don't need a whole lot because the melody is pretty, uh, oh, it's very beautiful as it is. Just adding the bass notes would actually be enough. So I'm adding just 
regular chord on the strong beats, starting with the F or C sharp minus seven flat five. Playing with the pick, right? So again, I'm on the bandstand. I'm doing intro. I'm not playing some intricate classical arrangement, which of course you could do, but that's not the uh, the goal. What we're trying to do here. I could use my fingers too, I guess. But I'll. I could play the chord like that, and then the melody. Or I can break the, break it or arpeggiate it. Because I'm playing rubato, right? It's in a rubato intro. For the next chord, I think the root is enough. So I'm, I'm jumping with my pick. Here I want to throw in that chord. So it's a F sharp, it's kind of a diminished chord. G, B flat, or A sharp, E over B. B minor 7. I actually like B minor. Triad. Because I have this uh, thing that I really like triads, and I think one of the, something I never understood about jazz players is that they seem uh, reluctant to play triads. I don't get that. There's always like a seventh or in some fancy extension. Triads are great. Uh, Bill Frisell does that, but it's rare to hear just triads in jazz. Like even like Autumn Leaves it sounds great with triads. I think. see what's wrong with triad step. Sorry, I digress. Where were we? Oh yeah, so then we have E minor. You can always obviously throw in the low E. Here I also play just the bass note. And the same thing here. The dominant with the tonic bass note. Now we're aiming for a G sharp minus one flat five, and as I've talked uh, before, but in my previous video videos on uh, chromatic two five, you can always approach a two five from a two five half step above. So, right. So now we have this E. Flat five. I'm only playing the guide tones and the root there. And then I'm playing the G split up here. Because I get the melody notes. So then we're on C sharp. So G sharp minus seven flat five to a C sharp dominant. So it's going from the sus to the third. And you can be fancy there and play a sus with a ninth. So like a B triad over C, C sharp. B triad over C sharp. And for those of you who have studied harmony, you know that you're not supposed to play that chord in a minor tonality because the minor tonality calls for a flat ninth, not a regular ninth. But here you can do it because you get this kind of, the D in this, this chord, and then you just, right, so you have a, a, a little melody there that kind of works because it's going somewhere. So when I play that F, I play a flat nine, regular nine, flat nine, and then same thing, a step down, F sharp minus seven flat five. A over B to B dominant flat nine, E minor, and here instead of resolving it to a D major, we have this chord, A flat or G sharp dominant altered. So I'm playing something super fancy here. Uh, 
on a chord with the flat 9 and flat sharp 5 open strings. Then we start over again. Next verse. Oh, sorry. Seven five five. Here's the weirdest thing of the tune: the the key change. So instead of going to F sharp minor seven flat five, you place a G minor seven flat five. So we transposed everything a half step up from B minor to C minor. It's a very very unusual and kind of almost bizarre uh, key change. I'm not even entirely sure if the original version has that key change or if it's something that came later. It seems like something Bill Evans would do, right? But in the new real book, uh, they have that key change. But I'm, I've heard people play that tune without that key change. But Michel Legrand was pretty, he did do a lot of that kind of stuff, uh, key changes and kind of surprising uh, harmonic things in his tunes, right? So. I th but maybe somebody knows and can comment about if they, you know, if the original version has that key change. I also know that there was a band leader who would try vocalists for his group. He would always pick this tune because, because if the vocalist could nail that uh, transition, he knew that he could count on that vocalist. Because it's, it's a very good ear training exercise to play. Uh... So where's that note now? Okay, and then we're doing the same thing as before, just a half step up. So here we have A alter. Now we have a D minus seven flat five. Here I can be very, very fancy and throw in open G. Love that sound to get the the minor second right in the middle of the voicing, which is always nice. And then I like this chord here. So I get the open strings, I guess. So it's F over G, right? To G dominant flat nine. And then we're back to the same thing. dominant flat 9, F minor, and here is the, the last section of the tune, it goes to E flat, and then A flat, so I'm playing a Lydian kind of sharp 11 chord, but it's also maybe more of a note that wants to resolve Perhaps, but I, the Lydian sound works there, I think. So, uh, where were we? Do, 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 B flat, E flat. You must be so, D minus 7 flat 5 there. F over G, G dominant flat 9, C minor. I thought a lot about what come up to try to come up with a super fancy voicing for the last chord. People always play really fancy stuff for the last chord of a tune, right? But it ends on that tonic note. So I decided that the best voicing is just a C minor triad. And also, the next if we're playing it again, the next chord would be a C sharp minus seven flat five. So it's already kind of a surprise there, right? So 
Right, so I hope you uh, it wasn't moving too fast for you. So uh, the PDF is on my Patreon page. And um, yeah, then if you're soloing over this, you would kind of, because it's played as a ballad, so if you play as a sweet medium swing or slow medium swing, you would make uh, the bars twice as, the chords twice as long, right? So C, C sharp, F sharp.